Hi and welcome to British Ants. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at a Lassius niger, which is a species from Northern Europe and Britain. A common black garden ant. Uh, it's one of the most popular ones we sell. It's a, a great starter ant. So here we have a typical colony of a queen with one to five workers. Got plenty of cocoons that you can see there as well. Uh, the queen here has been caught from a nuptial flight and you'll see her brood is representative of the kind of starter colony. Um, you'll also notice that there's a, uh, a very pale worker, that one there, um, which is literally just hatched out in the last hour. These will darken over the course of an hour. Um, they tend to be quite soft bodied when they come out of the cocoons, so it's not uncommon um, if they're kind of panicked to hide under other workers or um, under the queen. Um, but within the next hour, they will turn black pretty much like the rest of them are. The queen is six to eight millimeters in length on average. Some are small and some are large. It very much depends on the um, mating flights and uh, how well the colony is done in the wild as to how large the queen is. So it's not representative of a larger queen laying more eggs. You just get smaller queens and sometimes you get larger queens. So here we see the colony running around. You'll see the workers doing this kind of bobbing action, which is a kind of warning signal. This is quite normal. They'll soon settle down if they're left undisturbed. So the the worker size tends to be three to five millimeters, although as these are uh, the first workers that she's raised off the reserves of her body fat. These are all actually one millimeter. So these are very small. These are what they call nantics. So taking a look at the test tube here, uh, we can see they're firmly fixed towards the, the moist end of the cotton. Uh, that gives them about 60% moisture and they're quite happy down there. Um, we've put a very small daub of honey in there which the workers are now having. Um, this is the first food that they've received. Um, very small amounts of protein can be added at this stage and that will increase the queen's egg laying production. And they will feed that, uh, the workers will feed that uh, honey or protein or whatever that you decide to feed them. They will feed that back to the queen. So here we are zooming in a bit getting quite excited by that. As the colony develops, as I said, the workers will go to about three to five millimeters and uh, they will get, they're a very bold species. So they're not afraid to take on much larger ants. The queen overall will produce a colony of about a thousand workers. Uh, and she can live on averages between seven and 12 years. So, uh, they have a good innings, as it were. The nuptial flight of this species in the wild tends to be late June, July and August. Um, if the weather's erratic, then you may see a number of flights um, throughout the summer. And this is very much down to uh, the temperature and the humidity. Um, it's not uncommon to have a hot spell and then uh, have a short burst of rain and then you'll see them all coming out. This is a great time to collect the queens, um, usually once they've landed from their nuptial flight. So here we see one of the workers taking some honey back and feeding one of the other workers. And the queen seems quite interested. So she wants in on the action. There we are, she's now being fed. It's uh, actually quite hard to zoom in on a test tube. Um, it's got the reflections coming off the camera. But uh, there's the queen having her first, first bit of food that she's had in a very long time. I think the priority is um, the first or the, the last worker to have hatched seems to be getting fed. So it's quite an interesting process. 
When it comes to feeding these, uh, we'd recommend uh, a fairly high protein diet. You can get uh, the, the jelly proteins, um, you can get dry protein, which could be added um, into the enclosure. Uh, remove any excess food, because you don't want that going off. Uh, they also are a big fan of um, farming aphids in the wild um, and taking the honeydew that the aphids excrete. But uh, it's not always an easy thing to get hold of. But crushed mealyworms, um, crushed crickets, anything that's been dispatched and, and opened up. Um, it's a little bit gruesome, but um, this is really what they want, that, that kind of high protein. Um, the more protein you give them, the more you will see egg production increased. Uh, and that pretty much applies to a lot of species. Um, it's not always a case of heat. Uh, if you really want to see results with a colony, then uh, we definitely recommend plenty of fresh protein. Now, this is a colony of Lassius niger that we observed uh, outside uh, in the garden. And they're actually attacking a Lassius flavus, which we can see there. And the Laffi uh, Lassius flavus, which is the meadow ant, is fighting back. But you'll see a lot of these raids if you observe the colonies in your garden uh, going on. Uh, usually pre-nuptial, you'll find that a lot of this going on. Um, the wild colonies are requiring a lot of protein and they will certainly go out there looking for it and take on wild nests. So the Lassius flavus here, who looks like she's um, getting picked on, is actually... Uh, slightly smaller than the Lassius niger, but she's certainly giving as good as she gets. Um, oddly enough, the colony, these two colonies, you've got a, a colony of Lassius niger and Lassius flavus, and they're, they're within about three foot away from each other. Um, and during the prenuptial flights, it's not uncommon for um, either of them to start these kind of battles which can usually go on for days at a, days at a time. The, um, the Lassius niger wait around the outside of the entrance to the flavors nest um, and encourage the workers to come out where they then kind of try and pull them apart on the outside. Uh, but the colorations of the, the Lassius flavors shown against the Lassius niger. Uh, again we've got um, the Lassius niger in these the black ones are um three to five millimeters so this is a well-established colony that's taking on another one um, i have seen lassius niger take on uh, other tropical um colonies that we've had in the um in the ant room before so um if you've got a well-established uh colony of these then a good uh, escape prevention is is recommended because if they do get out they will go on the hunt and they're not afraid to take on even bigger ants twice three times the size of the, the one they're trying to take on now we've also got a code that can be used for the next hundred customers uh, that will give you 20% off on the website so if you stuck around this far then if you enter the code Lassius which is L-A-S-I-U-S 101 into the website when you purchase this species. Uh, this will give you 20% off a queen with workers. And that's limited to the next 100 people that decide to use it. So feel free to use that against this a purchase of this species. If you receive the queen and she hasn't got workers, then you don't need to feed her. It's just a case of waiting patiently. And uh, we'd always recommend letting a colony establish in the test tube to around 10 to 20 workers before releasing into a formicarium. Um, again, that applies to an awful lot of species, but uh, definitely these. So thanks for joining us. Uh, don't forget to leave uh, any comments that you have in the box down below. 
and we'll try to respond to those. Uh, if you have any tips yourself on how to keep uh, Lassius or any successes or failures, then again, pop your comments down below. Um, any tips for other users is always appreciated. And uh, we'll leave you with this uh, iconic battle that's going on. Um, and uh, see who wins. Thanks for joining. Bye.